Good morning, and welcome to the fifth Sunday of Easter. As we begin our time of worship, we would like to offer our thanks for those who continue to donate. Your generosity helps in so many ways. We would also like to thank Devin for sharing his ministry of music with us today. Sometimes, oftentimes, words have been written and thoughts put down on paper that help to illumine the sacred text and help us to wrestle with long ago written words. Today, we are thankful for the prayers adapted from the work of Mary J. Skiffries, writer with Abingdon Worship Manual, and the musings of Ronald Cole Turner from Feasting on the Word, as well as Bishop Michael Curry, who wrote, Love is the Way, a most excellent book worth recommending. Indeed. Okay, I'll stop that. wish to acknowledge that we are gathering on the traditional territory of the Chippewa, Odawa, Potawatomi, and Delaware of the Anishinaabe peoples. We seek to honor the culture, history, and spirituality of Indigenous peoples across this land. May we live with respect on this land and in peace and friendship with all our relations. Come this day with hope because you are loved. Come this day with peace, because you are forgiven. Come this day, because this is a holy day. And no matter where we are gathered, whether living room, couch, or around the kitchen table, or sitting on our porch, we are together as we worship God. And as we continue to worship, let us join our voices virtually as we sing 375, Spirit of Gentleness.
Now let us join in a prayer for, of yearning, and we'd invite you to say the bolded parts. Come with what you have. For you who grieve this day, know that you are invited to bring the broken pieces of your heart. Loved by one another, we discover God's love for us. Come with what you have. For you who come with gladness, know that your melody will find harmony. Accepting God's love for us, we are called to love one another. Come with what you have. For you weighed down by too many shoulds and what ifs, know that here you may lay down the burdens of guilt and shame. Loved by one another, we discover God's love for us. Come with what you have. For you who have the answers, know that new questions await you. Accepting God's love for us, we are called to love one another. Come with what you have. For you who come seeking, know that your questions are safe in the presence of God. Loved by one another, we discover God's love for us. So hear these words of assurance. The Spirit imbibes in each of us, loving us, loving through us, forgiving us, and forgiving through us. We are loved and forgiven, even as we love and forgive. Thanks be to God for a love like that. So let us love not just with words, but with our lives. In this spirit of love, we invite you now to share virtual signs of peace and hugs of grace with one another. <laughs> a new creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others. By the Spirit, we trust in God. We are called to be the church to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, to our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Loving one, you call us to lives of faith and action. The two are interwoven into the tapestry of life. Open our hearts and minds to these ancient words. Help us to hear your word for us today, to love not only in word or speech, but in truth and action. Amen. today is from 1 John chapter 4 verses 7 to 21. Beloved, let us love one another because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten of God and has knowledge of God. Those who do not love have know nothing of God, for God is love. God's love was revealed in our midst in this way, by sending the only begotten into the world that we might have faith through the Anointed One. Love, then, consists in this, not that we have loved God, but that God has loved us. Beloved, if God has loved us so, we must have the same love for one another. No one has ever seen God, yet if we love one another, God dwells in us, and God's love is brought to perfection in us. 
The way we know that we remain in God and God in us is that we have been given the spirit. We have seen for ourselves and can testify that God has sent the only begotten into the world. When any acknowledge that Jesus is the only begotten, God dwells in them and they in God. We have come to know and to believe in the love God has for us. God is love. And those who abide in love abide in God and God in them. Love will come to perfection in us when we face the day of judgment without fear, because our relation to this world is just like Christ. There is no fear in love for perfect love drives out fear. To fear is to expect punishment and anyone who is afraid is still imperfect in love. We love because God first loved us. If you say you love God, but hate your sister or brother, you are a liar. For you cannot love God whom you have not seen, if you hate your neighbor whom you have seen. If we love God, we should love our sisters and brothers as well. We have this commandment from God. Carol, I have a confession to make. I have been singing about love this week. Love, love, love. All you need is love. Where, oh, where is love? How about everybody get together, try to love one another right now. One love, one heart. Let's join together and feel all right. Where is the love? Where is the love? Where is the love? Well, as painful as it may be to hear me sing, <laughs> in some ways, it's a bit easier <laughs> to hum a tune about love than to live into the love to which the author of 1 John continues to call us this week. For the past couple of weeks, we have been exploring the letter of 1 John and the question of love. By now, we have discovered that the author of 1 John is very concerned that the community to which he writes understands the importance of love. The centrality of love is a theme that is woven throughout the entire letter of 1 John and culminates in verses 8 and 16 in that deceptively brief phrase, God is love. The writer tells the early Christian community and you and I today that all things begin in love, flow from love, are perfected through love, and return to love. That's a whole lot of love, Carol. <laughs> With a surprisingly brief statement, the writer tells us what God is and what God is not. He might have said that God is power or order or goodness. That's true, Carol. In our Insecurity and longing for protection, don't we often yearn for a God who can control nature and prevent sickness or violence? A God will, who will protect us from all harm? In a world of moral confusion, might we wish for a God who lays down the law with complete clarity and holds everyone accountable, catching the cheaters and rewarding the faithful? In our hunger to possess, might we even imagine a God of prosperity who promises to make us rich and get us that shiny new car if we obey a few principles? Hmm, I, I think I've uh, heard, heard that kind of imagining on Sunday morning TV. <laughs> Yet John suggests that none of, these, none of these things in his brief statement about who and what God is. Yes, whatever may be true about God's power or moral order or generosity, John, the author of First John, avoids all of these descriptions in favor of the simple word love. It's not power or law or prosperity, but love that looks outward. It is agape, which is the Greek word for love, not the Valentine's kind of love, but love that seeks the good and well-being of everyone our families, our communities, our world and creation, that kind of love. 
Agape is the heart of the truth about God. How do we know this? Not by imagining or philosophizing or debating, but by looking, by experiencing. Think about someone who has impacted our lives in a profound way. Maybe they believed in us when no one else would. Maybe they challenged us in a way no one else could. Maybe they simply wrapped their arms around us and said it would be okay. Or maybe they didn't say anything at all. Whatever they did or did not do in word or deed, they loved us unconditionally, wanting the best for us, not because it served them, but because they loved us. That is agape, and it deeply affects all aspects of life. God has acted in love, and we do not have to guess what God is like. We simply have to look at what God has done. We cannot see God, the author tells us, but we can see what God has done. For the author, writing to this community, the greatest example of agape love can be found in the example of Jesus. We have seen and testify, he writes, pointing back across intervening decades since the time when Jesus lived and died, invoking a memory still fresh enough in the hearts of this early community. The writer reminds them that they know God is love because they are part of a community that has a memory of witnessing and experiencing God act in love through the person of Jesus. Some in the community received love through the stories told by Jesus. Some received forgiveness and mercy. Some experienced compassion and some experienced justice through his words and actions. Some in the community stood at the foot of the cross and watched the suffering of outstretched love. Some in the community prepared the body for burial seeing firsthand the wounds caused by an unjust world met with love. Some in the community doubted, only to have doubts transformed by the presence of a love that cannot die. God is love. More than power or even goodness, God is love. Restless, creative, self-giving, opening, flowing out into the other, coming back in new wholeness, love. Tucked away in verse 7 is the claim that we know God by seeing what God has done. But seeing is not enough. We know God in the fullest and most authentic sense only when the love of God flows through us. God is love. Only the one who loves can know this love that is God. Love is not a concept known abstractly. It's an action lived concretely. It's not enough to remember Jesus' self-giving love, to think about it, or even to be moved by it. We must live it, the author declares. To know the God of love is to live the love of God. Bishop Michael Curry, in his book, Love is the Way, writes, God so loved the world that God gave. God gave. God did not take. God gave. That's agape. That's love. And love such as that is the way to the heart of God and the heart of each other. It is the way to a new world that looks something more like God's dream for us and all of creation. What Dante spoke of as the love that moves the sun and stars. Curry goes on to say, we must always make love our priority for love invites the world to see the face of God when it might otherwise feel absent. There is power in love to help and heal when nothing else can. The author of 1 John is very clear on one thing in particular. What we cannot do is to claim to love God while refusing to love the sister or brother in front of us. Love and hate simply cannot mix. We tell lies to ourselves when we claim we can love and hate at the same time. God is not in the business of hating. God is in the business of loving. Our only job as followers of Christ is to be the face of love by witnessing to the love of God that came to us from Jesus himself. 
Curry is right. Love is the way. And thus, it must be our first priority. The author of 1 John points us to the two great parallel commandments, love God and love your neighbor. These two are tied together, he tells us. Not only must we obey them both, it is impossible to obey the first without also obeying the second. We love because God first loved us. God's love transforms. God's love meets us where we are and takes us to where we need to go. Love is the outpouring of the transforming spirit that permeates all things, making them holy. As someone much wiser than myself once observed, love is the only thing that has ever changed the world for the better. So how then do we love as God calls us to love? How do we, Carol, follow daily the footsteps of love rooted in Jesus' journey? How are we inspired by these words to grow in love? To quote Bishop Curry again, the way of love will show us the right thing to do every single time. It is our moral and spiritual grounding and a place of rest amid the chaos that is often part of life. It's how we stay decent in indecent times. And we need not fear for God's perfect love casts out fear. We are made in love to give our love to one another in the way that Jesus gave his love with agape, giving his whole self unconditionally to heal us and redeem us. With God's love, we have the power to go into the world fearlessly, to act lovingly, even if imperfectly. Deanna, perhaps we might end our time of reflecting on God's love with these words from Bishop Michael Curry. When God, who is love, becomes our spiritual center of gravity and love our moral compass, the world changes for the better, one life at a time. So don't give up on love. Listen to it. Trust it. Give into it. Obey it. Love can help and heal when nothing else can. Love can lift up and liberate when nothing else will. For God is and always will be love. Thanks be to God for love like that. Amen. Amen.
So let's join our hearts together in a time of prayer as we share this prayer written by Bruce Pruer. Let us pray. Let us give thanks for the remarkable gifts of God's creating and redeeming love, the loving that casts out all fear, for the love that frees us to ask questions and explore, to frame doubts and investigate new possibilities, to build theories and then cross-examine them. We thank you, God of adventurous love, for the love that helps us to communicate with one another, to express trust and respect, share heartaches and visions, to convey love and mercy. We thank you, God of reconciling love. For the love that inspires us to warmly encourage those around us to affirm and build up, comfort and enlighten. We thank you, God of nurturing love. For the love that celebrates the world around us in poetry and song, to delight in shapes and colors, intricacies and patterns, awesome forces and deep mysteries. We thank you, God, of visionary love. For the love that encourages us to express something of our faith, for creeds and prayers, hymns and readings, discussion groups and sermons, we thank you, God of creative love. Above all else, God, we thank you for the love that allows us to admit that we have no words in which to adequately describe the process of faith in Christ the awesome worship of our God, and the holy wonder of the Spirit. We thank you for that point where our love becomes wordless adoration. And this we do pray in the name of the one who leads us on the path of love and action, as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And our closing hymn today is once again from Voices United 232, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore You.
So go now to love, even when love involves risk. We go now to love as God loves us. Go now to care, even when caring is hard. We go now to care as God cares for us. Go now to love in truth and in action. By this, we are known as God's beloved community. Amen. Amen. support me in so many ways. I can't think of a better way to honor you than to make a difference for others. Mother's Day can be more meaningful, it can be more sensitive, it can be more inclusive, it can be more compassionate. It can be more generous. Mother's Day can be more. And that's why when you make a special gift through Mission and Service this Mother's Day, you will directly support families in need in Canada and around the world. You will help provide things like parenting classes, respite care, health clinics, safe shelter, and education to families who need it. And when you make a gift, you can choose to send any one of a variety of free e-cards that I guarantee you, you won't find on the shelves of your local card shop. Give a gift to help families and let someone in your life know they are your inspiration. Together, we can make Mother's Day more. Everybody's quiet. Yeah, we'll say right <laughs> Welcome. Keep, keeping in touch with Carol Hardgrave is preempted this week. And in its place, welcome to Coffee with the Two Bobs. I'm Bob Belbeck, and along with Bob O'Neill, we get together with some of the men from the church every other Monday night <laughs> on Zoom just to connect, check in to see how they're doing, especially during this time of the pandemic. So how has the pandemic affected you? Eric, why don't you start us off? Okay, I really miss travel because Kathy and I like to go away every once in a while and we haven't been anywhere for over a year. So travel is the biggest thing I miss. Just from and, one room to the next, eh? Uh, yeah, that's about it. So <laughs> the passports are sitting in the drawer and we haven't been touched. <laughs> so, What about you, Bob? How has the pandemic affected you? I have a... I think I've got a bad case of FOMO because I think things are going on and they're not going on. <laughs> like I'm, I'm not going anywhere. Ellen and I aren't going anywhere. So I guess the, the, it's missing people. 
Right. Like you really do. Everyone misses people. Yeah. Yeah. And we're just not getting together. No, we're not. Glenn, what about you? What do you miss? Uh, or how is it affecting you the most? Um, similarly with uh, Eric, uh, travel, see our kids. They're both in Guelph, in the Guelph area. Okay. Um, even golf right now, I can't even go and hit the golf ball. You think um, that'll change? You think that'll change before the end no. of the lockdown? No. You think he'll keep it right on? I think so. I, he's getting pressure, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's yeah. it's continuing. Yeah, for sure. Ted, mm-hmm. what about you? How's the well? Pandemic? Well, of course, it's a travel thing. We had a uh, cruise ship uh, booked, and um, we thought well, that's probably not going to happen because that was this fall. Then they sold the ship. <laughs> then they canceled the tour. So <laughs> you're right. We, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. No, doesn't look so like. That, it. But and then, of course, not seeing the kids either. You know, they're all out of town. So yeah, yeah. And, you know, they're they're only three or four years old once, right? Yeah. Oh, is yeah. that right? Yeah, Bill. What about so when you? was the last time you? When was the last time you saw them, Ted? Are you not seeing any of the boys? Well, um, Derek or Colin, rather, they're in London. So you can kind of, we just took a drive down there in March because we had these Christmas presents that we had. <laughs> and then we have birthday presents. So the pile kept getting bigger. Yeah. So we finally just drove down there and met them on the front veranda one day and passed all the stuff over. Yeah. <clears throat> But the ones that are in um, Hamilton area and in Toronto, I think there's twice. Well, Chris and Kieran, they came here at New Year's just for a couple days. And every time we talked about getting together after that, <laughs> the numbers went uh, through the roof again and we just gave up on it. So, but Derek and Christine, we haven't seen them and the kids since last august yeah see now if you'd waited with colin's family oh, oh. until last week we got that snow then it would have made that exchange of christmas presents seem a little better <laughs> it would have been well there was actually snow there because it was london you know, okay so. all right good good <laughs> bill how about you yeah it's definitely missing in the grandkids because i mean uh we have five here in chatham which we just see very rarely uh, as driveway visits but my kids my grandkids are we haven't seen them for over a year we haven't seen them since last march isn't that hard so, to believe isn't that so hard that's, to believe? that's yeah. pretty tough and and uh karen's expecting you know, at the end of august beginning of september so we're hoping this thing wow. is over so that we can go down for the birth and uh and uh reconnect so Anyways. Now, now where where are Janice's kids? Where are they? Yeah, in in uh, they're in uh, Richmond Hill okay. area. So down in the GTA, but they just bought a house last night in Markham. Good for them. So they're moving at the end There's of July. There's big news. Yeah, that that is big news for sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Lawrence, <laughs> Lawrence, how's the uh, pandemic affected uh, you and Mary? Um, the same as the rest of you folks have mentioned, uh, missing the grandchildren, mm-hmm. missing travel. Now, I was like Ted, we did an exchange of Christmas gifts and <laughs> Easter gifts. <laughs> this was about three weeks ago in London. Um, we certainly miss um, traveling overseas, although those days are over, I think, by the way things are going. All right. But um, a note from Heather, she indicates it'd be nice if she could come home. And whether there'll be some grandchildren come or not, we'll figure that out. But um, right. that's not going to happen real soon. Hopefully uh, maybe by the summertime. Well, that's this was some time ago she had sent that note saying she would like to come home. But um, one of the other updates we got from Dan and Shay and Brian, they're dealing with the virus. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, one of, and it came from contact, one of Shay's cohorts was um, just having a, she's a teacher as well on staff where Shay is, having a tough time, I guess, and Shay was there on Sunday, a week ago Sunday, 
uh, just offering moral support and so on, but picked up the bug. And so there oh. is 10 oh. days. They're not to go off their property. <clears throat> where, where are they, Lawrence? They're in London. They're in London, right? On Victoria Street in London there, just not too far from St. Joe's Hospital. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Nice little house. Okay. So Bryn, um, it didn't affect her very much. There was one day she had a fever, <coughs> and, um, just out of sorts a little bit. But other than that, she's raring to go. She had a new bike at Easter time, and she just wants to run the wheels off that thing. <laughs> but uh, anyway, they're restricted to staying on their own property for 10 days. Wow. Dan and so Shay, how's it affecting Jay? Dan and Shay, it affected them very tired, um, really aches and pains, sore muscles. Now, both of them are, they take care of themselves. They're in very good condition. So that should help them get through this, I think. Yeah. And, uh, right. and speaking with Dan, while we were doing room family chat yesterday, he was saying both he and Shay are starting to feel a little bit better, but uh, they're not ready to uh, do the 100 yard dash yet, apparently. So. Yeah. Anyway, it takes some time to get through. And Dan was saying on Friday, both of them lost their taste. Their sense yep. of taste yep. has disappeared. And that's mm. certainly one of the symptoms, all right. So, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Rick, how about you? Now, Rick, we should, we should uh, let people know that Rick just had root canal today. So if he's talking a little funny, <laughs> you have to excuse him. Funnier than usual. Funnier than usual. <laughs> <laughs> Well, probably the same thing as everybody, the, the, uh, the traveling it, and our something that's a little unique, even though we're older, it's uh, both kids, uh, both of their graduations, their convocations were put on hold and they were going to do them. Mitchell's Master of Science at Guelph was supposed to be, and that got canceled, so we didn't get to go to that. And then Sarah's, they put off a year and they were going to do it again. Uh, they were going to try to do two years at once in Scotland, and They've canceled that again. So, mind you, we couldn't travel there even if we wanted to. So, it's just we're doing okay, but uh, we miss, miss some of the regular things that people do. <coughs> just. Yeah. Well, nobody mentioned the first thing that I wrote down was a lot more time with my wife. Well, that's one way, <laughs> that's one way it has affected us. I didn't say good or bad, I just said more time together, more, well, more reading. Spend a lot of time with your wife. <laughs> when we were doing this stuff to get ready that's for the right. third. <laughs> that's right, you were. Uh, that's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, actually, Ted, you and Rick probably spent more time with her than I did uh, during, <laughs> during that time. But uh, uh, that for sure, and more reading and more Netflix and more playing the ukulele. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, those are all things that uh, I've been able to do more. I'm still doing a little bit of work uh, through the funeral home. Uh, and that's kind of crazy because of the protocols we have to follow. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What I miss most, I, like you guys, <clears throat> the grandkids, um, we saw uh, Luke and Mikhail. We've missed two of their birthdays now. And we saw them uh, in October. Kyle had brought them here for a weekend in October. And we haven't seen them since then other than Zoom. In fact, I got a phone call about five minutes ago. Um, Michaela lost her first two. So she had to call her to let her know. So I have to make that call at, at eight o'clock tonight. Um, also, uh, coffee and conversation after church on Sunday. Oh, yeah. We oh, miss yeah. that. We miss For that. Sure. that uh, it's nice to be able to do it on Zoom. I'm glad that uh, you guys all uh, uh, join us uh, every other <coughs> Monday night on Zoom. But it's, it's not the same, is it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Having dinner party with friends, uh, even, even sitting out in the patio, hopefully this summer. We'll be able to get together in small groups on the patio if if people behave themselves and uh, uh, we can get on top of this curve. But uh, I don't know. Uh, we talked earlier about a protest that took place today, and uh, those kinds of things scare me. Um, mm -hmm. It's not a good way to uh, uh, to bend that curve for sure. But uh, anyway, um, any other things that you miss the most, guys? Speaking of protest, um, Hillier was one of the guys in the protest. Oh, yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Tarion and Hillier. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Sometimes you just can't understand it, can you? OK, well, that uh, that's about it then. As you can see, we, we all seem to be coping rather well. I know the women of the church probably <clears> missing <throat> our smiling faces on Sunday. And uh, tune in on Sunday, and you'll be able to see 
um, the church service, and then we'll be live and in color. So thanks for joining us. <laughs>